Summer from Bella Canvas, and in a recent video we talked about all of our different types of fabric. In today's video, we're going to talk about the different printing techniques and discuss which fabrics are best with which techniques. We're going to cover plastisoling, water-based, discharge, sublimation, DTG, and heat press, and talk about which of those techniques work on each of our different fabrics. Stay tuned. So let's start with 100% cotton. 100% cotton is pretty much the easiest fabric to work with in the screen printing world, and it works with pretty much every single technique except sublimation. Plastisol ink is typically the easiest type of ink to use in the screen printing world, and it works great on a huge range of fabrications, including 100% cotton. So with Plastisol ink, you're gonna have a hand, meaning the ink lays on top of the garment. It works great with 100% cotton, along with all the fabrics in our line. With cotton, you're not gonna have to worry about dye migration. Dye migration is something that happens with polyester, and we'll touch on that later. But because of that, it's gonna work great with a typical cotton white plastisol ink. Then this ink's great because it's got a lighter hand to it than some of the inks with poly blockers. Another technique we love for 100% cotton is water-based. So all of our cotton is 100% combed and ring spun, meaning it's got a super soft hand. And what water-based is, it's an ink that is absorbed into the actual fibers of the cotton. You're not gonna feel it like you will a plastisol ink. This feels the exact same as a regular shirt would feel with no print on it. So water base is great for any light colored cottons or um, any darker colors as long as you're using a shade darker. You can't use a light water based ink on a dark fabric. For that effect, you're gonna wanna use a discharge. Discharge ink is kind of like the complement to water based ink, but it's used on dark fabrics. So in the sense that you don't feel a water based print in terms of the hand, same goes for discharge. With discharge, it's gonna work best on 100% cotton compared to you know, your tri-blends or your heathers, but something you will wanna be careful with and test for is on different colors. Each color is going to take that discharge agent differently, so um, make sure to do a wide range of testing before moving forward with like a big bulk order of a specific discharge print. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, discharge doesn't work on light garments. There's not enough contrast. So with a light garment, you're going to want to use water-based. With a dark garment, you're going to want to use discharge. Uh, this is another discharge print that we did with actual colors. So with this one, the discharge agent removed all of the pigment from the gray fabric and replaced it with these colors like for the whites and the reds that you see in this print here. So let's move on to DTG. Uh, DTG stands for Direct-to-Garment Printing. We've done a few videos about this in the past and it works best with 100% cotton t-shirts. 100% uh, cotton is pretty much the DTG printer's ideal garment. With DTG, it's really important, more so than with screen printing, to have a really, really smooth surface. You wanna make sure you use a combed and ring spun garment, so a uh, Bella Canvas is a favorite for DTG printers as well. Here's another DTG print. With a dark garment, you're gonna to wanna to lay down a face, and the light garment, you can just go ahead and uh, print the ink directly on the shirt with DTG. So heat transfer is the next process we're going to talk about. It also is super easy with 100% cotton. Uh, heat transfer is if you place a vinyl, a foil, a whole variety of different types of heat transfer effects. But basically with this, you're going to just uh, want to heat press it for about 15 seconds for 320 degrees, which is pretty standard in the heat press world. Uh, lastly, we have sublimation. So uh, sublimation is a process that only works on polyester. So you can't sublimate at all on 100% cotton t-shirts, so we don't have an example to show you, but we will later in the video with some of our blends. So next we're gonna cover Heather CBC. Heather CBC is another favorite among printers, and it typically takes ink pretty similar to our 100% cotton. Typically with Heathers, you have to worry about the dye migration and polyester coming through the ink uh, when you're using plastisol. But we did some extensive testing on all of our Heathers and found that they work pretty much just as well with uh, cotton white as they do with an ink with a poly blocker, like a 50-50 or a poly ink. So what that means for you screen printers out there is you can use a more standard ink with a softer hand and not have to worry about dye migration like you usually do with Heathers and that's pretty exclusive to the Bella Canvas collection. The same might not hold true for other brands. With Plastisol ink, uh, we like to use kind of a thinner line on it. That will keep the original feel of the garment shown below. But you can also do like a full cover of Plastisol. This technique is really popular, especially with kind of like streetwear brands. So for this one, we have like a puff 
ink below and this like full coverage plastisol, some people like the feel of a print. So it really comes down to customer preference on that one. So next we'll talk about water-based printing. With water-based, it typically comes down more to the color of the garment than the actual fabric. So a light-colored Heather will take water-based ink very similar to a light-colored solid. We love the feel again because you're not going to have the hand that you would with plastisol. So discharge printing on Heather's won't work as well as discharge printing on 100% cotton because that discharge agent only works with the cotton fibers of the shirt. So it's really going to come down to the color. Here's some prints that we did with just the discharge agent, and you're still gonna get a lightened effect, which is great, but it's just really important to do your testing and know that you're not gonna get as bright of a discharge result with Heather's as you would as 100% cotton. DTG is another printing technique that works better on 100% cotton, but is also possible with Heather's. With this technique, you're gonna really need to do your testing. The polyester yarns will take the DTG ink differently than the 100% cotton. So with this print here, we got a great result, but it took the printer a lot of R&D to come up with the right amount of pre-treat and the right ink settings to achieve this effect. Another thing you wanna be careful with when DTG printing on any blends is make sure to wash and scratch test it because some of that ink might come off in the washer when you're scratching it. It's not as durable on the uh, synthetic yarns as it is on the natural 100% cotton. Moving on to tri-blends. Tri-blends are one of the softest fabrics on the market. But because there are three types of yarns, poly, cotton, and rayon, and each takes ink differently, printing on them can be trickier than printing on the fabrics we've covered up until this point. However, as consumer preference continues to trend toward the softer garment, it's important to know how to print on tri-blends and choose an ink that complements the garment. So because tri-blend is largely a synthetic fabric, you do have to be aware of dye migration. Again, this will really come down to color. We tested all of our tri-blends with three types of ink, cotton white, 50-50 and poly white and we'll be releasing those printing tips on our site uh, by the end of the year but what we did notice across the board is some on some tri-blends the cotton e worked just fine where other colors did need a poly blocker to stop that dye migration from coming through the ink so you can see uh, on the blue the results vary a little bit and you actually do need that poly blocker ink to stop the dye migration Whereas with some colors like this clay, you'll find the 50-50 and the cotton white ink perform pretty much the same. On some tri-blends, you'll need to use a gray underbase to prevent any dye migration with some of the trickier colors. Also another tip to keep in mind is using a stretch additive or softener will help keep the stretch of the garment and the soft hand feel when printing plastisol on tri-blends. Tri-blends already have a super soft hand, so you don't want to print a bulletproof shield on it. We love water-based ink for this reason. Tri-blends will take water-based ink pretty similar to 100% cotton. We did a past video about doing water-based and discharge printing on our Heather solids and tri-blends, and you can see there wasn't too much difference between our solid mint and our mint tri-blend. With water-based, you always want to be aware of the color. Different colors will interact with the ink differently, so make sure to test first. Discharge printing will also work on tri-blends, but you're not going to get as bright of an effect as you would with 100% cotton. So the end result will be a more muted effect. Uh, you can see this print is with the discharge agent only, and this is with discharge plus color added. So you're gonna definitely get more of a muted effect than you would on 100% cotton with discharge. Direct to garment is usually not recommended on tri-blend fabric. However, the Bella Canvas tri-blend reacts differently than most brands because the synthetic material acts more like a cotton than a plastic. We also have the super soft surface for our tri-blends compared to some other brands. So it is possible to get a great DTG print, but again, like with Heather's, you're gonna wanna do a lot of wash testing and scratch testing, and basically a lot of R&D to get the levels right. It's not gonna be as easy as 100% cotton, so we do recommend this technique on tri-blends for expert DTG printers only. You can also heat press on our tri-blends. Uh, one thing you'll have to be aware of is because there's a lot of synthetic material, you'll want to cure it at a lower temperature and for a less amount of time. So we usually recommend about 280 degrees for eight to 10 seconds. So because our tri-blends are 50% polyester, it's actually a really good candidate for sublimation if you're looking for more of a vintage effect. So with sublimation, the ink is gonna adhere to the uh, polyester fibers only. 
So with this, we had a much brighter print and this is after a wash. You can see it's got more of this vintage faded effect, which is really popular and a triglin will feel a lot nicer than 100% polyester shirts. So if you're a sublimation printer out there, I definitely recommend experimenting with our triglins. Another cool thing is we're one of the only brands to have solid tri-blend. So our solid white tri-blend is really great for sublimation. Now moving on to my personal favorite fabrication, Flowey Polyviscous. Flowey is one of our best selling collections because it's one of the softest fabrics we have. But because it's made of synthetic fibers, polyester and viscose, and it doesn't have the cotton that printers are used to usually working with, we know it can be intimidating for some printers out there. So definitely check out last week's video if you want to learn more about what I'm about to cover. Pasta Salt ink uh, works great on Flowey. It's one of the easiest inks to work with. Something to keep in mind if you're using Pasta Salt ink is you want to try to keep the original feel of the garment. So you can do that by adding in a softener or a stretch additive. And on some darker colors, you're also going to want to use a polywalker base. Water-based printing is another technique that works really great on our Flowey Poly Viscose. It's going to keep the soft hand of the original garment, so we love this um, when you're working with artwork that has more coverage, like these butterflies here. Uh, the whites are going to be more vibrant, as with any water-based printing, than some of your lighter colors like a gray. So discharge printing won't work on Flowey Poly Viscose because there's no cotton content for the discharge agent to remove. So if you're working with a darker colored garment and you want to get the soft hand effect of a discharge print, we recommend uh, this water-based technique that we actually featured in last week's video. So what we did is use a water-based poly blocker base and then use a water-based ink on top. This print here has an amazing feel, an amazing stretch, and it's done with water-based ink on Flowey. When it comes to DCG printing on Flowey, this is another one where we've seen really awesome results. So DCG printing on our Flowey is recommended for experts only, but because this is such a popular fabrication, and if you are interested in learning some tricks for how to do it, you can check out one of our past videos that we'll link in the description below. Heat pressing on Flowey is actually pretty similar to tri -blend because it's more of a synthetic material. You're gonna wanna heat transfer at lower temperatures, less time. Some people might not think to sublimate on our poly viscose, but it is actually an awesome fabric for that. Um, there's much more polyester content than with the tri -blend, so you're gonna get a brighter print than you saw earlier. So this is 65% polyester, so it's not gonna be as bright as 100% polyester, but it feels amazing, and the colors are only gonna be slightly more muted than they would be with 100% polyester, and you're gonna get a garment that customers respond to a lot better than 100% poly. And you can see you can also sublimate on lighter colors like this peach. Polyester is really big in the athletic market. And while we don't have any 100% polyester tees in our Bella Canvas line, Bella Canvas also has a line called All Sport. So we're going to touch on the printing techniques you can do with poly using our All Sport line. So with 100% poly, you're going to want to use a Plastisol ink. You definitely have to be aware of dye migration since the shirt is 100% polyester. So you're going to want to use a poly ink and or a poly blocker base as well, just depending on the color and if you're seeing any dye migration come through. You won't really get great results using a water-based ink on 100% poly and discharge won't work at all because there's no cotton content in the 100% poly shirt. With DTG, we've heard it is possible on 100% poly, but it's definitely tricky and we definitely don't recommend it as the most DTG friendly fabric. When heat pressing on 100% polyester, just make sure you're using a material that's resistant to dye migration. Sublimation is really great because the ink actually becomes a part of the original garment. So similar to a water-based ink, you're not gonna feel the sublimation print at all. We hope you enjoyed this video. We obviously couldn't cover a lot of the intricacies involved in each of these printing techniques. This is meant to be more of a broad overview, so make sure to do your own testing. Also make sure to ask any questions that you have in the comments below and we'll try to get back to you and subscribe to our channel for a new video every week.